How are artists and welcome back to today's video. As always, you can skip the intro and go straight to the tutorial to know what's up with it. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I did Katniss's backpack. It's not an hour long video, meaning I'm not showing like every single thing, you know, hours of me sculpting. It's rather a walkthrough, so a step-by-step -step of every single step that I took in order to create the backpack. And so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. The first step that I took in order to create the backpack is to sculpt the blocking in ZBrush following my reference. I started with a simple basic cube, then slowly shaped it into something that looked like the silhouette of the backpack. Then I used a masking tool to create the opening of the back. With a masking pen, I shaped it. Then I went into the subtool tab, click on the extract and accept to have a new subtool from the mask. Since I had already done it before recording, I'm just going to select the results in my subtools. As you can see, the result is a bit wavy, so to fix that, I'm just going to go into my Deformation tab, then play with the Polish by Groups in order to have a smoother result. When I'm satisfied, I'm now going into the Zero Mesh tab to have a cleaner and lower amount of topology since it's easier to work with. Afterwards, I'm just going to do small adjustment to its shape, and finally, add a little bit of thickness with the Z Modeler by clicking on one of the face with space on the keyboard, then select Action Extrude and target all polygons. Since ZBrush is extruding my faces backwards, the final thing I'm going to do is go into Display Properties and click on Flip. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing over and over again for the rest of the backpack's part. Make a mask, then extract it. So I'm going to skip that part and basically go right to the next step. And if you want to see more of how I do the blocking of the rest of the backpack, it's going to be available on my Patreon. My entire blocking is done, so I'm sending every individual part by going to FBX Export to bring them into Marvelous Designer and basically simulate the fabric to create the realistic folds. With Marvelous Designer opened, I'm just going to import my mesh by dragging it into my scene. Then make sure the import options are right for the scale so you don't have surprises when exporting this back into ZBrush. Then with the Polygon tool, I'm simply going to go onto my Pattern Viewport and start tracing over the silhouette of the backpack's cover so that I have the fabric matching it. When created, I'm now going to use the pins in order to snap the fabric to the mesh I have imported by clicking on W on the keyboard and also clicking on the fabric with the left mouse button. If you are missing resolution, you can always add more by going into the particle distance and lowering the number. Though it can slow down the simulation, if you want to work fast, I suggest you keep it to 10 and above as much as possible. The other thing you can do to add more folds to your fabric is to play with the shrinkage, weft and wrap. This is basically going to stretch your fabric even more as though it was washed and then basically giving you more game to, you know, kind of go in there with the pins and try to create your own wrinkles. Something you will notice me doing here is click on my right mouse button while my mouse is on the pattern to do a layer clone over, which is basically going to duplicate my pattern on top of the other one I already have. The reason I do this is basically to add more thickness, replicating the harsh fabric we usually find on the type of backpacks that I have as a reference. So at this point, what you're seeing me doing is play with the fabric to have more interesting wrinkles. That can be either by putting more pins, playing with the presets, uh, the wrap, the wrap, every option, adding more particle distance. Honestly, at that point, it's all trial and error. So it's basically going to be your work to see if you like the result or not and if you're ready to send it to ZBrush. The final result gave me something like what you're seeing currently in ZBrush. Sometimes I like to explore the multiple versions of trial and error and combine them to have a different result. So I have another version of my bag opening in the subtool right above the correct one that I personally liked. 
what I basically want to do is to project some of the wrinkles from the other backpack that I've imported into the ones that I like. So you're going to see what I mean in just a second. To better illustrate the alternative version, this is one version that I have exported from Marvelous. And here is the other subtool I was talking about. So I want to keep the little wrinkles that are on the edge and basically project them onto my other subtool. So the first thing that I want to do is to mask out the extremity of the cover of the backpack because I only want the center to have some projected wrinkles. Then afterwards, what I want to do is basically remove every subtool that are visible in the viewport that are not necessary for the projections. I am only removing the ones from the backpack because they're the ones that are the closest from the backpack cover. When that is done, I can go back to my projection tab and basically hit the project all button. And as you can see, I have my wrinkle projected onto my cover. The other method that I use in Marvelous Designer, for instance with the main body of the backpack, is that instead of pinning the fabric on the blocking mesh, I use the blocking mesh as if it was the content of the bag and building around it. All the while I'm working on that, the gravity is set to zero so that the pattern stays in place and doesn't fall down. Since I don't want dropping, I only want tight wrinkles from the stitching. And once again, if you look at the pattern viewport, you can see that I have duplicated the fabric so that it has some thickness to it with the layer clone over so that once again, it resembles the reference with its harsh fabric. Once again, I'm using the same workflow for the rest of the backpack parts. So I'm going to skip that part. But if you're curious to see the unedited version of me working in Marvelous Designer, you're free once again to check it out on my Patreon. So one thing that was particular about this backpack is the black net that's stitched to it. And in order to create it, I have found an image on the internet of a fishnet, then added it to Photoshop with a level filter to intensify the black and white parts of it, basically making it an alpha. After having saved your alpha from Photoshop, it's time to try it out. So I'm going in ZBrush and the first thing that I want to do is unwrap some UVs so I can project a texture onto my model. Then in the surface tab, when I open the noise options, I'm going to import my alpha I have just created by clicking on alpha on off. You can then play with the scale in the options to have the texture be repeated as many times as you want, depending on what you want it to look like. When you're satisfied, you can go out of the surface menu window, then activate mask by noise. The idea is to extract the mask into a different subtool. But here lies the problem. The texture is not actually seamless. We're going to fix that by going back into Photoshop. And now I'm going to use the lasso rectangular tool to select the top part of the texture, making it its own layer. Then I'm going to bring that new layer down on the bottom and finally go on to Edit, Transform, Flip, Horizontal. The last step I'm going to take is basically to blend that new layer with the one that's underneath, either by using the masking tool and then trying to blend the two together or using the scale to have them better fit together. You can then try out the texture again in ZBrush, and if the result is conclusive, then hit Extract on the subtool Extract, and you should have your fishnet on your backpack. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it, sorry. Give a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for what my next video should be about. And subscribe if you really like the content. I really hope you do because I do put a lot of time in them. As always, there's Patreon if you want more content and you can find me onto my other social media, Instagram, TikTok, and ArtStation is where I post my personal work. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. One. Bye guys!